Hey, it's Matt from Anvil Auto. Today we're going to be talking about our GM bullet mirrors. We make these in carbon fiber and they're essentially a reproduction of the original second generation Camaro bullet mirrors. So they have the same stem height, the same size housing as the GM bullet mirrors. As a matter of fact, we used an original set to make our molds from. We also sell our own mirror glass. And the reason we do that is because uh, the driver's side bullet mirror from GM always had a cable remote. A lot of people don't like to use that, so we got rid of that. It just uses a uh, ball and socket that uh, you can increase or decrease the tension using these three screws here for this backing plate. Um, they're also uh, brand new glass, so you're going to have a hard time finding an uh, original set that has nice mirror glass. Uh, we also have the mounting brackets. Great thing about these is it gets rid of the original mounting hole screw that's on the stem. There's the original GM uh, mirror stem. Now this is the original style mounting bracket. Had two sheet metal screws that went into the door. Had a little hook here that hooked on that and then you had this uh, screw that went in there. Now we got rid of that, so it's a much cleaner look. We don't have that look anymore. We also have our new aluminum bezels that fit onto our the front of the mirror, and we have those in natural finish. It's polished, black anodized finish, hard anodized, and also the chrome finish. So, what you want to do first is to dry fit the bezel to the mirror. Now you'll notice that oftentimes the diameter of the mirror is a little bit bigger than the bezel. So you don't want to have the, the mirror too much proud of the bezel. So since this is tapered, if we sand this, the more we sand it, obviously the, the opening gets smaller and will fit the bezel better. Um, better to have the bezel too big and too small because if it's too small not much you can do about that you ever heard the joke i cut it twice and it's still too small well you don't want that to happen so what we're going to do is you want to put masking tape around the edge here so that it doesn't splinter your carbon fiber when you sand it if you have a it looks like you're going to have to take a lot off you can start with a, a 150 grit sandpaper and then make sure you wear a mask dust mask, because this carbon fiber stuff you don't want to get in your lungs. So, let's start sanding on it. Once you sanded some off, what you want to do is do another dry run. See how it looks. That's getting pretty close. Another thing you notice here, it's not getting too close there, even if you push this up against there and you'll see that the carbon fiber is a little thick there so what we need to do and you're going to need to do this anyway because you want to give the glue a tooth on the inside of here and you want to sand this edge too so the glue will uh, grip your bezel as well as the carbon fiber but any high spot or thick spots you want to kind of come in sand those down you want to sand all the way around. I've got 60 grit here. You want to have a real aggressive sandpaper to sand it so it's not smooth on the inside. So again, your glue is going to have something to grip onto. Because of the process we use, you'll get some wrinkles there from the vacuum bagging. So you need to kind of sand those wrinkles down. Make sure you have a pretty even wall thickness all the way around. There's a little high spot right there. It's kind of thick right there, we'll have to get that. Now you may choose to wear gloves while you're doing this as well. Um, this doesn't really splinter 
by doing this. Mostly when you're cutting car composite carbon fiber or fiberglass, you get splintering, which you definitely want to use gloves for. But sanding, it's more dust. So just make sure you wear a mask. Okay, now we're going to do another dry run. Yeah, it's fitting a lot better. Look at that, that's like right where we want it. That's looking pretty good. So, what we want to do is switch up to a 220 sandpaper. go to a 400 sandpaper. Okay, that should be good enough. Might want to just make sure that, see there's a little glossiness right there? Come back in. Make sure this is really sanded well. Good to leave the masking tape on there just in case you slip or whatever just protect that edge as much as you can until you're ready to glue the bezel on so you can see i demasked it after sanding it you can still see that the housing is slightly proud of the bezel and if anything you want the opposite you want the bezel to be slightly proud of the surface of the carbon fiber housing so what we're going to do is going to put the masking tape back on sand a little bit more to bring the opening of the housing down a little bit to match the bezel. So once you feel comfortable with the fitting of the bezel to the mirror, I'm going to take your masking tape off and do one more check. I'm pretty happy with that. It's looking pretty damn good. Okay, so one thing I haven't done yet is to roughen up the surface of the mounting edge. Now, if you're brave like me, you don't have to mask that off. But I'm a professional, so, you know, if you want to, you can mask that off. Just make sure you don't scratch the edge that you see. Just the edge that you don't see right here, this flange. That's the gluing flange. Just get that roughened up with some 60 grit. Now you can use several different kinds of adhesives to attach your aluminum bezel to your carbon fiber housing. Uh, panel bond should work. You can also use JB Weld. Uh, I like to use this stuff and there's also stuff called Goop. This is uh, E6000. Uh, now it comes in sort of a regular cap. I like to use the one with a thinner nozzle because it's easier to dispense. Uh, this one's black. Uh, this is transparent. Great thing about this stuff is it's uh, it's kind of like um, a, a contact cement. Once it dries, if there's any runoff, you can easily just scrape it off and pull it off. But it does adhere pretty well as long as you roughen up both surfaces. Okay. So what we're going to do is just put a bead all the way around our aluminum bezel. And you're going to get a little bit of glue that's going to squish out once you just press it on. That's okay. Like I say, you can take it off after it dries or even before it dries. I think it's easier to take it off after it dries. It's kind of like a rubbery, kind of like almost like a rubber cement. You'll see that flange <coughs> is angled. That angle one goes on that side. So I'm just kind of put it in there. Okay, so just press it up against there. Now you'll see there's some glue already on there. That's not going to hurt the carbon fiber at all. Uh, you can masking tape, put some masking tape on the edge here to hold it on. But if it doesn't seem like it's wanting to squish out, you could just set it down and let it be. So next we're going to show you how to assemble the mirror with the glass. Now this one doesn't have the bezel on there, but if it did, you can put the bezel on first and then assemble your mirror. We have our other one waiting in the wings here. That glue's drying, but in the meantime, we can show you how to put this together. Uh, it's very similar to how the original GM mirrors went together. It has two screws uh, and they go through 
here and then the whole thing sandwiches together. So the screws come in through here, get the whole thing put together with that. Uh, one thing you'll notice is the brackets are a little different. See how these screw holes are closer together and these are further apart. So there's no way you can mix the two together. The plus angle is, is uh, different on them. You have a left and right. So normally we ship these so that the bracket is pretty close to how it wants to be so that the mirror is centered. You might need to make a few adjustments. Uh, also, you'll notice that we ship these with the hardware and we always use stainless hardware. Uh, one screw is longer than the other. The reason we do that is because uh, it's gotta be a short screw here because of this angle here. So if there's a long screw, you wouldn't be able to bottom out the screw before it hits this. Uh, here you got a lot more room. You provide a longer screw just so you can do this one first. It's easier to use a long screw than a short screw to start with. So you need to use the Allen key. Um, so we'll start with our long screw. Put your lock washer on there and then we'll assemble this thing. Okay, so I'm gonna put the right stem there. Put this here. I also like to work on a soft surface just so we don't uh, scratch the surface of our clear coat on our carbon fiber. Is to line up your back screw hole first because the back one is for the long screw. And then put this on there and go ahead and start your screw. Now, we can do the other one. Another screw hole. I'm gonna go in kind of sideways so the bolt or the screw doesn't come off your Allen wrench. And try to thread that in there. Get both screws fairly cinched up. But again, you're sandwiching carbon fiber so you don't wanna crack it. But it's pretty resilient, pretty strong stuff, so it should be okay. Okay, so now that's together, right? And you can adjust accordingly. If you're happy with it, if you want, you can take that off. I like to leave the plastic on while I'm mounting the mirror to the car. So, uh, you know, nothing gets scratched up, but there you have it. So next I wanna talk about how to put our mounting brackets in the stem. Get a lot of questions about that because it's not necessarily uh, that apparent. So there is a left and right. These are mirror images of each other. Now you notice that the bottom of the stem is a little flatter on this side, rounder on this side. A little bit uh, bigger here and narrower there. So pick the right bracket that matches that. And that's this one here. Now you'll see that they fit in there pretty well, although sometimes it fits a little proud. So what you wanna do is make sure that this bracket fits a little bit in from this, this edge here, okay? And also, uh, the reason you wanna do that is you may need to file your stem, and you can even do that before you put this bracket in, once you fit it to your car, to make sure that the surface conforms to the surface you're putting it on, your door, obviously. So, what you can do to fit this in a little bit more is uh, see where it's hitting, and it's usually these edges here. So you can come in with a file and just file that off. Once you get this filed down to where you're pretty satisfied with how it's fitting, it's fitting just below the surface, maybe about 40 to 60 thousandths of an inch below the surface of this edge here. What you wanna do is also roughen up inside this stem with some 60 grit sandpaper. We're gonna be using some JB Weld to attach the bracket to the inside of the stem. It's gonna to need to have a really strong bond. So if uh, you have access to industrial adhesive, you can do that. A really strong epoxy or polyurethane adhesive will work. But you don't want this coming off while you're out on the road or the track. So make sure you have a good rough surface 
to begin with. Okay, so it's always a good idea to also roughen up the edge of your bracket all the way around, even though we filed this side. It's good to get some grooves going this way because it's going to want to pop out this way, right? So the more the surface is rough going this way, the better it, the adherence you're going to get with the glue. So our glue is completely dry now. We can take off this masking tape that I put on there just to make sure that it stayed on the way we want it to. I want to come in close. You can see where there's a little bit of glue, excess glue, and that'll just come right off. You just scrape it with your fingernail or whatever, and now, or even just kind of rub it with your hand. And it's kind of like a rubbery type material. You see that seam is even all the way around, very tight. Let me just some more of that glue there. So that's done. Now we'll glue on our bracket. A uh, couple things I want to mention about our brackets is uh, if you do have bullet mirrors already on your car, you just take that bracket off and we use the same spacing for the screws. So, you, since this uses sheet metal screws, you probably just need to drill out the holes a little bit to clear these uh, number 10 screws that we have here. And uh, it'll fit on just like your original bullet mirrors. Or if you have some original set and you want to get rid of that screw, you can just buy our brackets, fill that screw hole in right there, and then repaint your stem or your whole mirrors if you want. And uh, that's a much cleaner look. Uh, it's also a much more positive uh, attachment to the car because you've got uh, you're not just relying on sheet metal screws and uh, this hook and sort of uh, screw situation there. Now we've got this prepped and we already have this angled so it fits in there nicely and you want to have have it in there even all the way around so there's the same amount of space all the way around. Uh, we have this hole here, so in case you need to take the mirror apart, once this is glued in, you have access to those screws there. Okay, so we have our JB Weld already put on a, just a scrap piece of cardboard is what I usually use. You could use JB Quick, but um, I believe the JB Weld, even though it's slower setting, it's stronger. Uh, I would recommend that unless you're in a big hurry you could use a JB quick, but uh, that tends to be more brittle any epoxy That is uh, quicker setting tends to be more brittle Therefore not as strong in the long run Get that mixed up real nice Okay, so I'll take a little bit of that. Um, okay. If you want, you can mask this off if you're worried about glue getting on there. Now we're going to come back and put a second application on after it has a chance to set. So we put some on the top of the bracket once it's in place to keep it from popping out. Okay, that should do it. So make sure we have it going in the right way. Make sure it's in there properly 
evenly. So that should be good. So we'll just let that set up for a few hours and then we'll come back in and we'll lay a bead all the way around there. That will keep it from popping out. Uh, one thing you want to make sure of is once you just tighten this down that you're not popping the bracket off of your mirror if you tighten it down too tight once you put it on the car.